In 2023, the war in Ukraine entered its second year, with no peace on the horizon. Military coups destabilized parts of Africa, and new and deadly wars arose in Sudan and the Middle East. The United Nations has had little success in stopping the bloodshed. It's particularly been challenging because the kinds of conflicts the UN has been facing over the last year have been exactly the kinds of conflicts that the UN is least well equipped to manage. There are conflicts between the big permanent members of the Security Council. And when those countries are involved, the UN has the least scope for action. That's because Britain, China, France, Russia and the United States can use their vetoes to block sanctions and other tools the Council can use to maintain peace and security. This past year, geopolitical divisions intensified over Russia's war in Ukraine and since October, Washington's support for Israel's war against Hamas. And the mood in the Security Council now is poisonous. The people of Gaza are looking into the abyss. Secretary General Antonio Guterres was unable to unblock the paralysis by invoking in December the rarely used Article 99 of the UN Charter to press the Council for a humanitarian ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas war. The United States vetoed his appeal and Israel called for his resignation. The news wasn't much better for the UN's peacekeeping efforts in the field. The organization's blue helmets mark 75 years of peace operations this year. But the anniversary comes as Mali and the Democratic Republic of Congo demand that UN forces leave their territory, and as Haiti appeals for an international force to help stabilize the country, just not a UN one. In Africa, leaders are turning more to forces drawn from regional blocs to deal with sub-Saharan crises. This, along with peacekeeping's hefty annual budget of more than $6 billion, has prompted questions about the efficiency, value and need for present and future missions. Moving forward, what uh, we think we should work together with the member states on is uh, to make sure that uh, UN peacekeeping operation, when they are warranted, will be for fit for purpose. And when it's about enforcement, not peacekeeping, then it's not for UN peacekeeping to do enforcement, it's for uh, other form of operation. One hopeful moment came at the COP28 climate conference in Dubai. Delegates agreed for the first time on the need to move away from fossil fuels, a major driver of global warming. With climate change intensifying natural disasters, conflicts and other global shocks, the UN has been called upon more to mobilize delivery of humanitarian assistance. We see both things, right? We see that even when there's diminished political space to broker political solutions to conflicts or to human crises, there's still the real potential to do important, um, significant work on the humanitarian scale, but it has to be funded, it has to be supported in order to get the sort of greatest impact. Over decades, many have called for reforms to the UN, including expanding Security Council representation to reflect current realities. The UN was paralyzed for long periods of the Cold War. So the fact that it is once again going through a period of crisis doesn't mean that it's dead. I think there is a real need to think about the structures of the UN and how they could be changed. The problem, the analysts say, is there is little consensus on how to change the organization for the better. Margaret Bashir, VOA News, the United Nations.